So are you the English major in the crew? Because <laughs> I just need to know right now. <laughs> I'm like annoying facts, girl. So you're the re- you're the Jeopardy winner. <laughs> yeah, Charlotte's factoid. <laughs> no, I used to Talk. work in research. Hello. That's so Take cool, her. Charlotte. I right. saw that on the Shut up, egg. everyone. Okay, no, right. I'm just kidding. Shut <laughs> up, Charlotte. Shut up, Charlotte. I love you very much. I love you shut too. your goddamn mouth. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Um, you guys welcome back to how come today we are talking about boobies with some really great guests um if you don't have boobies you may like boobies if you don't like boobies maybe you will after this episode or at least you'll think they're cool um we had somebody write in recently that he said he'd like more men's and penis owning sexual health topics and we are so happy to do those but you just have to suggest them to us um because we don't necessarily think about them like we've been thinking about our boobs and our periods episode coming soon for a really long time so we wanted to do an episode on each um but if you have a topic that you want covered anyone please message us follow us at how come podcast on the instagram um you can email us um all that info's at the instagram how come podcast we would love to cover everyone's stuff um, also, hey, don't forget to come to the live podcast on Wednesday. Um, we are so excited to see you. If you have not gotten your tickets yet, don't worry. We have some left. Again, there was that um, snafu or that people didn't really understand the website. There's no guest checkout, but it's not a big deal. You just have to put in your email and make a password. Um, so go to howcomepodcast.com or remycasimir.com and click on the link to get tickets for Wednesday, August 14th. 7 p.m. We're going to have me doing stand-up, Sarah Armour doing stand-up, Abby Abby Rosenquist doing stand-up, and Joe List from Tuesdays with Stories. Um, Amazing podcast, amazing comedian. Uh, We're going to be talking about herpes. And yeah, then after all of us do stand-up, we're going to have a live pod and Q&A. And you guys are going to be able to ask questions. Um, And yeah, it's going to be so fun. Go howcomepodcast.com. Also, thanks to everybody who has bought merch and sent us photos of you and your sick merch. It looks awesome. We love you. Um, Thank you to everybody who's been writing on iTunes and reviewing us and telling us where you want us to tour. This is so sick. Um, I know I keep saying it, but I love it. I love having the list of being like, come to Raleigh, come to Texas, come to Albuquerque, come to Ireland, come to London, all of them. It's like amazing. Um, So please keep rating, reviewing and post us in your stories. Tell people that you listen to this podcast. Be proud. We love you. Um, And yeah, we can't wait to see you at the live show. This episode is awesome with Susanna Weiss and Michelle. Uh, I say this every time, but you're going to love it. How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Because I can't do it by myself. I want to just... So today we are talking boobies with two awesome women. The first one is known as the indie mom of comedy. Mm -hmm. She was a finalist on Nickelodeon's Search for the Funniest Mom in America and started her career with an incredible one-woman show, Diary of a MILF. She is also a former doctoral candidate in psychology and once received the prestigious Soros Fellowship Award. She's amazing. She's here. Welcome, Michelle. Hey, Remy. Hey, 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 Charlotte. Love so honored that you could be here. Also very excited about our next guest. She is a freelance sex writer and editor who currently serves as editor for Complex and is a regular contributor to Vice, Teen Vogue, The Washington Post, Bustle, Glamour, Playboy, New York Magazine, and more. Um, she's amazing. You guys, welcome Susanna Weiss. Woo. Thanks. Yay. So happy that you're here. Me too. Good. <laughs> that seemed a little more hesitant. <laughs> Are you nervous? I think so. Okay. Don't Everything be. will be fine. We like to take it slow here at How Come. So we're just going to start today with conversations about our boobs. I, I've had a very love-hate relationship with my boobs. Charlotte and I have talked about our boobs. My, I got early boobs. Charlotte got very late boobs. Uh, I think people have a tumultuous relationship with them. How was your relationship with your boobs? I used to fantasize about cutting them off when I was 13 and they started to grow. I would just like stand in the mirror and squish them, and try to make them disappear. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure why, like at some point, I didn't know why then. I think I recognized that this suddenly made me an mm. object of mm. all this unwanted attention yeah. that I would be getting. Yeah. And I felt like I wasn't ready for that. It was yeah. like my body was ushering me into this world. Yeah, where totally. I was 
prey. Mm-hmm. See, I, I I welcomed the attention, and I I was always very excited about like becoming a woman and stuff. And like, I was one of the first go- girls who had like little mosquito bites. Me and my friends would look at them. It was me, this other girl Nikki, and this other girl Ariel, and we would look at them in the closet before <laughs> class in fourth grade and be like, "Show me your bites. Show me like." Because we were the three girls with tits, it was like so exciting for us. <laughs> what grade was this? Maybe? Fourth grade. I love it. That was the mosquito bite phase, so and innocent. then by fifth grade, there were like little handfuls, and I. I used to run around our house. I had a song that I would sing in our room. And, and a jiggly, jiggly. jiggly. Like in, <laughs> in front of the mirror. Like I was so happy. I showed our brothers. I showed my dad like my first bra. No. Not like my actual tits, oh. but I was like wearing like a bra, like a little training bra around the house. And I was like, look at me. Oh my I am gosh. woman. Like Hilarious. hear me roar. And then like, I guess it, within the same, within two years, I quit ballet because of my boobs. Really? Because in ballet, you weren't really supposed to be so womanly. And uh, yeah, then I got my boobs and I was like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And that was the first time I was like, I guess I don't really like them. Right. Um, And Charlotte and I were reading up on like how breast size can affect your athletic activity and ability and stuff. And like you always kind of think about that. But then like I'm like. I would have been a way more active person Mm -hmm. if it were not for these two massive things on my, yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of active stuff. Mm. I didn't have titties bouncing back and forth. Like, I played lacrosse, I played volleyball, where everybody else was getting those major sports bras, you know, the ones that like really constricted everything Mm -hmm. and held it in place. I could literally have done it bare. Like, I had nothing. (laughs) Right. There was no friction. There was no like sweating in the middle. You're like, there was yeah. that. <laughs> you're like, I don't um, have. I was like, what's what's going? Why is everybody like? You're not. No, I'm not. Yeah. And so you're right. I, I played softball and ran bases, and you know, I never thought about the freedom that I had in having smaller breasts. Yeah. You, you just put that kind of yeah. in perspective, and when you said that, it made you feel kind of objectified. Like you didn't have that. I either. never <laughs> even thought about that. <laughs> Nobody gave zero. There was zero like zero sexual around. attention. For some to give, they had no like mm-hmm. they was zero, and it was like I can't even imagine what that felt like. Totally, because I never experienced it. You now. can't. You don't even understand the flop. Like Charlotte, like I've always felt the flop, and, and a few of my I friends have had breast is. reductions because they were athletes or something. My roommate or from their backs were hurting. We. She looked at a stat. It said your boobs can move six seven to seven inches. inches up and down. Just a normal boob. Are you running. serious? Yeah, like. Ow! It's so like my at least college seven inches. roommate had huge, ginormous breasts, uh-huh. and she wasn't active at all. Like, mm-hmm. and now that you say that, that yeah. may have been because it was painful. So she essentially, at some point, she suffered from severe back pain yep. from hers. Yeah, and she got a reduction because of the pain. Yeah, and I just never even knew that was a thing. Like, I was like, who was getting titties? I know. Out. Totally. Yeah. The New yeah. York Times said, like, as breast size goes up, you opt out of exercise more and more. Yeah. yeah Do she they was... know why breast size is going up? Just, no, just uh, as oh, it goes up in your, I mean, it. It like, from person to person. going up because of all the surgeries <laughs> yeah. and all the french fries. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, when I get fat, my tits get fat, too. Let me tell you something. That is the one thing. I've been, I've been a chunky vegan for years, and then I've mm-hmm. been a more stealthy vegan just because, so... But French fries is my um, kryptonite. French fries is bay. Yeah, French fries is bay. Potato <laughs> is bay. Yeah, like baked potato, French fries, potato chips. Like, but I never got more titties. I'm like, y'all are some bogus <laughs> ass. You know, if we're supposed to get more because we chomping away on all this goddamn <laughs> potato, where are my titties? Like, yeah. where yeah. are interesting. Titties? Like, why we want them so badly? Besides being sexualized and stuff, did you ever look at your boobs and be like, this isn't normal? about something that actually is quite normal not that it wasn't normal um oh i guess i thought they were saggy mm. like the yeah. fact that i don't know i could like put something under it and it would stay that worried <laughs> thing yeah <laughs> like i never know what that feels like i'll never know you were like gravity exists this is terrifying <laughs> <laughs> like am i old i'm 13 <laughs> no they're they're definitely not saggy i think it's it's cool how the bra industry is now like renaming breasts like really because it used to be like yeah if you if you look into a cosmo and be like what kind of bra do i need it would be like do you have saggy breasts do you have tubular breasts or whatever <laughs> oh, wow. now they're renaming it to kind of like make it sound 
like more digestible and nicer and <laughs> less geographic. offensive. Like the yeah, geographic breasts is that or that, relaxed are you being breasts. Serious? No, I'm being serious. Yeah, relaxed breasts. Relaxed as instead of to saggy breasts with tension. Like what? <laughs> I heard are, the term pendulous breast in erotica. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. What is that? I think it's like I think it's like thick at the bottom like that saggy. swing. Oh my god! Like a yeah. pendulum. Like a pendulum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a different breast. I don't yeah. want to call it a pendulous. Breast. Wow. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. Bras, bras are amazing. Like a good bra will give you the illusion of having great tits. Yes. We just partnered with an awesome bra and underwear company called Cup, C-U-U-P. It looks like boobs. Um, and they their bras are amazing. Charlotte and I are obsessed. Cup believes that boobs deserve better. So they created a collection of modern, minimal, online bras to support all women. Their collection supports and shapes without excess materials that pinch or bulk. Literally, I, I haven't had a bra that I've enjoyed more than the one that I've got two of them. I have a white one and a black one and they are so great and I wear them every day. I actually bought laundry detergent. I never clean my bras. Like I'll usually have them sent out, but I want to clean these ones by hand just because like I'm obsessed with them and I want them to last forever. I always used to get upset about like getting a fat armpit with bras, like either like you're flat with an okay armpit or you have pushed up boobs with a fat armpit, not with cup. I have the best shape it, and it's, it's not a, oh, I, I'm going to post a picture of what I look like in this bra because it's amazing. Um, but get your own cup bra. They are proud to offer 40 sizes from A to H with more to come. Get a 10% discount with promo code CUP, C-U-U-P, X, how come. That is CUP spelled C-U-U-P, X, how come. Um, we're going to put that below too, just so you don't have to remember it. Um, and you do that at shopcup.com. Um, so again, promo code C U U P X how come um maybe next time we will get a shorter one um <laughs> make your boobs the perfect shape they were meant to be they ugh, I just love it um now I had some weirdnesses with my boobs besides the shape and maybe you guys did too like I always thought having like I've got little hairs on my nips you have stuff. no idea too. Like, girl yeah. I'm a goddamn gorilla let me tell you something <laughs> My entire family on my mom's side, all the women had hair right down the middle Ooh, of their breasts, right? Okay. And back in the day, I don't know who put the memo out, but somebody said it was sexy. Mm. Wait, do you mean in their cleavage? She's or? saying in the yes. cleavage. No, no, no. no <laughs> I was saying nipple. But... Literally, a uh, nipple as well. Literally <laughs> right here and going Sternum. down. Sternum. So my mom used to keep hers in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And somebody told her ass it was sexy. I don't know who this barbarian, I don't know who Conan the Barbarian was that found a Harry Stern, Stern whatever, <laughs> sexy. But it convinced me that when I started getting them, I'm sexy too. Awesome. So I'm in middle school with hair jumping out <laughs> of my shirt. And the boys are like, she's got hairy ones. And I'm like, that's Right. <laughs> I'm a woman up in this. I'm a woman. And it took for me mm-hmm. to one day yeah, like see a Bee Gees a, medallion girl, in your yes. chest. <laughs> it took for me to see it in a picture. Like I was all posing thinking I was the cute. <laughs> and it looked like there was like a small avalanche of dirt. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> like this little dirty chest. And I'm like, why didn't anybody <laughs> tell me? That this is disgusting. Because you thought, thought it was cute. I thought it was cute. But that's who what I think it was so... What? Yeah, who says it wasn't? I think it was it's gross. But it's not. <laughs> it's okay, so normal. So let me though. help y'all out. How many of y'all hold on to your mustache? Let's just work it out. Like, like who holds I, on to the I stash? I don't. I don't Thank like you. it. I don't right. like to be able to lick it. It was a, t- it was a <laughs> titty I, stash yeah. is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> it was a titty stash and it did not look good in pictures. This is nasty. Yeah, but if you were like walking around loving it and somebody else thought your mom was all hot, like there's just guys hooking up with girls yep. with hairy chests. Like yep. I'm down for that. Yep. Like imagine you grow up in a place where everyone has hairy tits and the one person who doesn't, you're like, oh, you don't have hairy tits. What's wrong with you? But it's normal. Girls have happy trails. They have nipple hair. Totally. There. I used yeah. to, I mean, I've got that in between, but it's blonde. I used yeah, to but be so you really. You can't see it, Rem. You can't see it. I know, but it. I could. I can see it from this angle. But I you got to be a perv to know you have it. Like you got to be all up in your chest. Like, hello, how are you? Oh, that's what's the, that's a disgusting person. But that's but, what you think about when you have nipple hair. You're like, 
somebody eventually is going to see this who's getting close point. to me. Yeah, I got so that's stuck what in I a got nervous about. And I was like, oh my God, somebody's going to see it. Or even the guy that I'm dating for a long time, if they see it and they know that it exists, like they're going to be so turned off. And now after, you know, growing up a bit, I know that that's not true. Like they know that you've got hair on your legs. It's so crazy. They know that you've got hair in yeah. your bush. They Like, you know, it's up to you to maintain it how you like it right. and stuff. And we looked it up. The most... The best way to get rid of nipple hair, if you want to, is with a clean tweezer. Yes. Really? Otherwise, you can get infections. Yes. Um, I'm such a barber. I've just been shaving like a crazy woman. <laughs> Did you ever hear that myth, though, that like if you shave it, it grows back heavier? It does, but I give zero fuck like Because you're like, it's easier to yeah, remove this way? it's just easier to remove. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm just like a pro at it now. It's like... <laughs> It's like it's done. Yeah, I started shaving my arms after Emily. My Lubin daughter's came into that. <laughs> my daughter wants. My daughter wants a complete body wax. She wants to get it all gone. See, I don't. I don't like now. She does. I'm, I like having certain hair and not having other hair, and I love having the option to decide which I want but, now. But wasn't it designed to protect us? At it some was. Point? Yeah, like I used to think the little bumps were really weird too. Oh, the bumps, the little bumps around on the areola. Charlotte found some interesting research. <laughs> the bumps are there. Because they produce a fluid that keeps your nipples like basically lubricated, protects them against infection. No and way. Coolest, especially when you're breastfeeding. Especially when you're breastfeeding, because you know they can grow, crack, all these yeah. things. Yeah, oh, um, I remember those days. But um, so they provide this protective layer, but they also smell like amniotic fluid so that the baby oh. is actually attracted to it when you're Because that's what the baby yeah. lives in when they're in yeah. utero. My baby's right out of the, right when it dropped. I could pop them right on. They were like, I was like, how do you know to do that? <laughs> you boobs are freak. incredible. <laughs> you little freaky baby. Uh, Susanna, you actually reposted and commented on a tweet that has since been removed that has sparked a lot of outrage and then outrage at the outrage. Uh, it showed the inside of the boobs when you are breastfeeding and basically showcased mammary glands and how they're boobs aren't just these balls of fat that are for men's enjoyment. And the internet was a Twitter um, after it, and you responded saying, why are people acting all grossed out by this cool and informative image? Does it take boobs off their pedestal as sexual objects that exist only to be gazed at? Feels like the equivalent of men in denial that women poop or fart. Like, what were the comments that were coming your way? They weren't coming my way. They were in this BuzzFeed article I saw, and it was about how everyone was so grossed out by it and was saying, oh, God, I didn't need to see that. I wish I didn't know that. And it wasn't really an offensive image. It wasn't, like, bloody or something. It was just, like, these, like, flower-like milk ducts. Yeah. And that was strange to me that um, it was weird for them to think of boobs as functional rather than as objects just to be... Yeah, just to, like, be squeezed or whatever. Um, Totally. I mean, but even, like, myself looking at them, I was like, holy shit. Because I think, like, we've talked about how the internal structure of the clitoris wasn't discovered until, like, 1998. Um, And Charlotte and I were like, yeah, you really never look at, in a biology textbook, like, a woman's body. Whenever it's split open, like, you assume it's a man because they're not starting with the breasts. They're starting with the lungs and the heart. Or it is a man. Or it is a man, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, and that's been an issue with the vulva as well. Um, I did a piece on how the nerves and vasculature of the clitoris aren't described in medical books. Mm -hmm. And um, there have been women, like, whose labiaplasties have been botched probably because of that. Because one woman, like, part of her clitoris was removed and they didn't even know it because Mm -hmm. they don't. Whoa. describe women as functional beings they describe their bodies as receptacles or objects for men yeah or just like i used to think i'd be like oh like if i can't come it's fine because you can still have a baby <laughs> you know <laughs> like it's still, not like, like biologically like imperative for me to have but like i don't think i'm gonna have a baby so like <laughs> i think the coming is more important <laughs> um i just wanted to talk about that article a little more can you bring up that um drawing of the boobies uh, inside because because your tweet ended up getting taken down because it turned or the the thing that you retweeted oh really um yeah ended up getting taken down because people were saying it wasn't actually accurate which that's okay it still sparked like a really important conversation about like and and there are ways or they are really complex systems in 
in breasts when you're lactating. But that image would only like I started thinking, I'm like, oh, my God, do I have those little petals in me right now? <laughs> like, no, that was a distinction that they didn't make, that it was like only women who are pregnant, pregnant can have that because the certain hormones go and then they create this alveoli and the ducts and the ductuals go all out your areola and that stuff. But that's not just in a normal breast. So that's something that we wanted to clarify from that tweet. Or they're in there, they're not being used, they're not as like engorged, they're not they're not being active, you know? Like mm-hmm. they can only And then start, once you're once done you're pregnant, they're yeah, gone. They go away. They don't actually look that symmetrical too. Yeah, they don't look that symmetrical. They don't mm. look like flowers. <laughs> they're much <laughs> That in of itself seems kind of sexist now. Like, oh, they have these little flowers. Yeah, they look yeah. like flowers. <laughs> like, no, they look like alveoli. And I'm pretty sure that there's alveoli in your lungs, too. Like, it's just a normal thing that expands and stuff. Like, it just makes it, oh, women have yeah. bodies. Yep. They're, they have bodies that function and do stuff. Um, but it is, it's just wild. I'm very impressed with us. <laughs> <laughs> we are very, very extraordinary specimens. We really are. Um, did you get big boobs when you were breastfeeding? For like a hot second, girl. It was a fool's goal. Did you enjoy it? It was a fool's goal because they were so, at first, they hurt. They were so mm-hmm. tender. But they sat up perfectly. They were being gorged with milk. So they sat up like the perfect set of tits. Mm. But if you touch them, I was going to fight you. <laughs> yeah. So it was great for the viewers. The viewers, but not for, but not for not you. Not for me. And. Yeah. And I had to learn that these were they weren't for me. Yeah. These literally yeah. belong They belong to somebody else. To my baby. And I'm like, I I used to cry because all I wanted to do was nurse because I knew it was the best way. My kids never got sick. They had high mm-hmm. immune systems and stuff like that. But it had me stationary. Like yeah. yeah. I literally took them with me everywhere. Totally. I got so good with my titty out. We could go to the mall. <laughs> and one of them started crying. I scooped their ass up and be like, <laughs> and we walk into the mall with it because my titties were still small. Got a small tit in the baby's mouth. Was it mouth. hard for? Did it hurt on your nips to feed? Um, the first one because she was early. Yeah, she didn't have a strong um, suckle. Mm-hmm. So I took myself back to the nursing center, back to the lactation center, and they put these little nipples on nipple shields out of silicon onto my nipples mm-hmm. to make it look like little bottles. Yeah. Why don't they do that to everyone? <laughs> they put them on there. They said that it would be easier for her to hold it. And sure enough, yeah. she was able to grab it, but it was on my nipple. Huh. But it was a little silicon nipple shield. Yeah, why don't they have that for everyone? That <laughs> yeah, sounds and like... she was able to suck, and then the milk would fill up in the actual... I, I looked like I had small bottles of milk <laughs> Yeah, on the outside of my tits. It was the most... I felt like... A, I felt like I should have been on Discovery Channel or yeah. like TLC. Like, this was not... I had, I had no precedent. My grandmother had nine children and never told me she breastfed. She called it nasty milk. And I found out later that her ass breastfed all night. Everyone? Wow. Yes. And I was like, why are you calling it nasty milk, Granny? You did it too. She was was like, there a thing against it then? Like, in, because, for well, her generation? you know, people have gotten in trouble, you know, in the last few years. Yeah, out in public. Like, they try to say it's it's obscene. It's That's ridiculous. Because yeah, it's so, natural and it's necessary and shut the girl, fuck up. Girl, and it's free. Yeah, about that? if you can eat a hot dog on the street, this baby can have lunch <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> um, were you like insecure about your nipples changing and stuff? Because there, Girl, I mean, one day when numbers Joker started bleeding, because one of my second baby, she was a hungry hippo. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Well, God damn, like really?" And she just had a big suckle, and sometimes you, it would crack, like you were talking Oof. about. It would crack a little, and I had to use this um, this lubricant kit it was made out of. Um, Gosh, vitamin E oil. Mm, healing. To heal the cracks. Like, you, people have no idea what women go through who are dedicated to that kind of mothering. Like, it's an acquired... Or even what you go through, like, with your tits changing, like, every month. Like, my tits change with my period. Like, do yours so get, you get bigger your and menses, smaller? Yeah. Not that I've noticed. No? Okay. I feel like, so like I've had, had boyfriends be like, it's like dating three different people. <laughs> and, like, I just... And the there's 
fluid that comes out of it sometimes. Yeah. Like nobody knows about that shit. And like I'm like I'm not pregnant. Like I is like that how normal? as you're talking about it, you're rubbing your titties. Like, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Every last one of us that has had a titty story is touching our own tits while we talk about our tits. That is how he was like. I'm like, like, I'm, I'm, like, like I'm like, like assuring them that like I'm like, like yeah I think like, you're, you're weird okay. but I like you I, I like you you're okay. <laughs> I keep staring at you touching yourself and I'm like am I a perv because I'm like why what is going on. No, this is science. I'm sorry that I'm t- attracting you. Hello. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah, so we looked in, because I've, I've even been considering, I'm like, should I go to a doctor because of this like fluid in my nips or whatever? It's normal. Apparently, it's very normal. Yeah. If it's milky, if it is green, or if it is brown, that's normal. But not if it is yellowish or bloody. If it's yellowish or bloody, go, go to the doctor. Right. So your daughter that. biting your tits. That's not. Yeah, I because mean, but after that's, a while they would gnaw on them because it was like fun. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm like y'all little bastards. I love how you talk about babies too in your stand up <laughs> that they're like losers and they, stuff. Yes. <laughs> because yes. I think it's such a an interesting side of motherhood that people don't they get like guilted yeah. if you say like yeah. I fucking Remy, dislike my I kid promise right you, now. It took me forever <laughs> to own the fact that you know first of all I never planned on being a mom. I yeah. never planned on getting married. I left my doctorate to be a stand-up. Yeah. So to get sidetracked and meet a guy, fall in love, get married, and then have kids, that was never Not the, the plan. plan. And that was yeah. like that was like, whose plan is this? And I felt like I got wife napped. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like I got freaking wife napped. And moms instinctively are nurturers. Most moms who have some healthy sense of what this is really about. It's like a big deal. Mm-hmm. But as a stand-up, there's no lane for the lactating comic. Like, <laughs> I was lactating. Like, I after I had her, I was still trying to gig, the first baby. And I was literally, like, going on gigs, and I would... And I wouldn't go far because I didn't want to leave her because I was she was exclusively breastfed. She didn't eat anything. Yeah. So for an entire year, she survived off the breast milk alone. Well, because you produced a lot. I too. produced a lot of milk, but she just liked it, and she was really small. She was a little bit early, and so I would do gigs maybe like in the Northeast region and get right back to Maryland. But in hotels, I would pump milk and take it to the to the concierge, and I'd have her name on it and the date and time, and they put it in the freezer for oh. me. So I would leave with bags. Of frozen milk. That's true story. Wild. And I would have like this little container and I had my breast pump. The breast pump looked like it was like it was an old school breast pump that I took. I rented from the hospital. So it looked like I had a bomb with me because it was real <laughs> heavy. It was wrapped with a leather belt and it looked like I was going to war. Like, But I was just trying to pump milk. But the long short of it was that there was no precedent. I had no comic that I could say. What was it like when you... For you doing this. When you were yeah, doing this. Ali Wong and, didn't exist at the time. At the time. So there was there no was, Schumer. Th- there was no one that was talking about, I, I'm a real mom, mm-hmm. but I'm also a stand-up. Yeah. I was a stand-up before I was a mom. Nevertheless, I, I never wanted to talk about almost the sadness of something as beautiful as being a mom mm-hmm. because there was no place to talk about it in stand-up. But not only was I a mom, I was a wife. Like yeah. I was a wife and a mom. And I was like, okay, where's the funny in that? But it showed up every day. But I was so afraid to talk yeah. about it because I didn't want to seem like I didn't like my husband at the time. I didn't like or you didn't my like kids. your kids. Or you didn't. You but I was like, y'all didn't kidnap my whole life. Like yeah. I was supposed to be a rock star right now. Like I would have a syndicated show by now if it wasn't for y'all goddamn dream killers. <laughs> I was like, no, it wasn't for your dream killing ass father because if it wasn't for his sperm, <laughs> dream killing ass sperm, I would be. You know, um, but we were talking about lubing up nips, like to keep them from getting chapped. But I, all, it just makes me think of like how nips are so sexual too. Like obviously, they're hot to look at, but like both women and men can get off from this very erogenous zone, right. which I don't think is talked about enough. No, um, like we had one of our really really early guests. He didn't mention it on the podcast because he's embarrassed about it. He he mentioned everything else but he was like i have to tell you this one thing after we recorded he's like i can't have my nipples touched or i'll come immediately you're kidding me but that's a thing like a lot of women have come through nipple stimulation a lot of men have um charlotte looked there was like an article that she found that the same brain centers that are stimulated when you're having a clitoral or a penis orgasm are stimulated and activated when you're having a nipple orgasm. Yeah, I had been afraid to explore that because I think I felt almost like then I was just giving him what he wants. Like, I know that's dumb because you want to give your partner what they want. But I was like, no, I'm not going to let you touch them. Like, Really? Yeah. I have that same thing. Like, I think a lot of my 
non-orgasming for people too is like i'm not gonna give you that satisfaction <laughs> <Non-orgasm>. <laughs> yeah like i'm like you can't ma- make this happen for me but I-, I get that but especially coming from a place of being like oh i'm sexualized all the time you're like even in this moment of sexuality you don't want to be sexualized or give him what he wants yeah, I always saw it as more intimate to, like, let someone take my shirt off than take my pants off. Because, hmm. like, that felt like <laughs> it was you guys say, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, when I was in college hooking up, I was like, you could take off my pants but not my shirt. You're, like, Winnie the Poohing it all over the place. <laughs> 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 What's that? Wearing a shirt, shirt no pants. No pants. <laughs> <laughs> Donald I'm Ducking. Laughter. That's the best ever. What's Winnie the Pooh? Oh, oh my. My. No. Oh, sure. No bear. Yeah, he was a bear. Okay, Literally no. the other night, Ben and I are lying in bed and I was like, take off your pants. I want to like warm up my legs like because I was cold or whatever. And I didn't realize he didn't have underwear on. <laughs> so he, and he goes, OK. And he takes off his pants like so readily. And then he's just sitting there Winnie the Pooh style. <laughs> that is so funny. I love that. It's the best look in the world. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. I love it. Gosh. Um, um, so how did you get past that or have you? Are you still working on it? Well, I thought my nipples weren't sensitive. Then um, I got back from an ayahuasca retreat mm-hmm. and then I was taking Whoa. a bath with my boyfriend and he started touching my nipples and suddenly it was like connected to my vagina. Yep. Like I could feel it like contract every time he touched my nipple. Whoa. And then I was, yeah, it was like I had been suppressing something and somehow like the ayahuasca brought it out or something oh and my then God. and then i was like excited and wanted to explore wow. it more so then i like asked him to do that more that's yeah. so cool okay educate me what's an mm-hmm. ayahuasca retreat it's a psychedelic it's like a plant that acts as a psychedelic you and it, um, right? yeah okay and you usually do it in like huts in the desert not like necessarily <laughs> did you go to um, peru no i did it in the netherlands um oh cool it makes you vomit right it does yeah. did you oh vomit oh my gosh now i, I know why I heard did you Chelsea hallucinate Handler. a friend of mine i'm a also, little okay a friend of mine her friend is really into it mm-hmm. and has made it a thing like that's now her thing and she's kind of moved away from her other friends because this is now her thing ayahuasca yep, is her i thing? just heard about it i just i was trying to like well how come i know that but i didn't know yeah. And I hate to look like, I, I hate to be that person who doesn't know something and is afraid to say, what are you talking about? Yeah. So I just say, I don't know what you're talking about. No, that's middle school shit. That's like I used to, right. people would be like, have you seen this movie? And I'd be like, totally. And they'd be like, didn't you love that scene where da-da-da? And I'd be like, yes. And they'd be like, that didn't happen, Remy. You're a liar. If you say no, you have to listen to them describe the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's so annoying. Right. Right. Totally. Um, but yeah, so the research found that women's sensory cortex has three distinct areas corresponding to stimulation of the clitoris, vagina, and cervix. <laughs> to their surprise, researchers found out that self-stimulation on the nipples light up the same areas. Uh, this sheds further light on the sexual importance of breasts. Yes. Um, and then one study actually found that 52% of men recorded, reported that nipple stimulation caused or enhanced their sexual arousal, according to the U.S. National Library of Medicine and National Institutes of Health. I'll tell you, ah. as small as mine are, you put anything on them, a tongue, you blow a piece of right? air. Mm. I am with you. I am Niagara Falls. It is really amazing. That's why I'm that so makes great. sense. They said this. I'm that so grateful I didn't so lose them. Like they're because they're so much smaller, so like the nerves are more concentrated. I'm touching my it tits is, again. Again, I'm not. I'm not looking. <laughs> it is amazing what happens to me from nipple stimulation. Wow. Amazing. How did you I, figure that out? Because I I felt freaky about it at first. Mm-hmm. I was like, Is he gonna think I'm a damn freak? Because I'm dripping like, like cold stone. It was crazy, <laughs> and I f- realized that it turned him on. Yeah, like, he's like, "Oh, that's what." And then it blew. Woo! Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, going bananas. It is the most bizarre thing. Did he um, know exactly what to do in the beginning, or was there guidance? Because like a lot of the guys I've hooked up with, I feel like they want to tweak your nipples, or they want like, to honk a honk your boobs. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, in a perfect world, in this new incarnation of my life, I believe there is a man mm-hmm. who knows exactly what to do with my nipples, mm-hmm. and he's <laughs> waiting for me on the other side of divorce. <laughs> and I promise you, when I meet him, 
I shall lift his name up high in the heavens. <laughs> I will sing it from I the mountains. I will sing it from the mountaintops that I have found the nipple man. And but he, c- yeah. could you instruct your soon-to-be ex on what to do? Because, I mean, you're getting wet, so he's doing something right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, here's the thing, and I don't know. Help me out, ladies. Like, there are some people who take instruction very well, mm-hmm. and there are those who kind of feel like you're emasculating them a little yeah. bit. Am I the only one that feels that way? No, no, I think a lot of people that way are that way, and I think a lot of men shy away from nipple play because they think that's emasculating, like their own nipples right. and stuff. Like, if men are getting off this much but they're hesitant to ask for it. Like we were talking to Jared Freed about how he's, you know, some women will make fun of guys for wanting a finger in their ass or whatever. And he's like, why can you make fun of us for stuff, but we can't make fun of you for any, like if we like nipple stuff, shouldn't we be able to give that to them as well? Right. Definitely. Yeah. I just had that conversation ironically. Really? I did. I said, what is with um, men clenching when they, their bums? Yes. <laughs> What is that natural inclination to clench when when they're pooing it, when they're Winnie the Pooh mm, in it? Winnie the <laughs> You know what I'm like? And I was told, I just don't like things in there. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, but how do you know you, you don't, don't like know, things yeah. in there? Yeah, and you, you don't know? know if you like your nipples played with yet. Right. I mean, I would say for everybody, start with like nice licking. Like exactly. Everybody likes licking. Everybody likes light massage, the yeah. way that you would massage any other yeah. part of a body. Yeah. Like I have this new thing with Ben where I like where he licks right across my nips, Very like cool. horizontal. Very Try cool. that shit. Um, <laughs> what's others? Like don't jiggle them too much unless that's like asked for. <laughs> no, I feel like a lot of boobs, guys do that. Yeah, that's the thing. The boob itself is a muscle. Massage the muscle. but right. And the nipple, unless somebody asks for it to be like tweaked or bitten or clamped, and like those are things that people like, yeah. but you have to wait for the okay for and that. And you have to work up to it too. Yeah. Like when you're starting like kissing, light touches on the nipple, and then it's like getting hot and heavier, and then you can get a little more aggressive and eventually work up to like biting or uh, clamps and all that. Mm-hmm. Right. Totally. Um but it makes it much easier to have an orgasm when you're when, lighting up all these different pleasure centers. Yeah, and it takes your mind off of, like, if you're a very, like, uh, in-your-head person and, yeah. like, somebody's working on your vagina or your vulva or your dick or whatever, your most private of parts that you're kind of sensitive right. about, if they're working on something else, if they're kissing your neck and they're touching your boobs or whatever, like, it's like when you somebody hurts you and then somebody else punches your arm so you stop thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, do many, many things at one time. Yeah. Um, I don't, is it me, or do we sometimes get embarrassed about how much pleasure we're actually getting from yes. nipple simulation? I think so. Definitely. And, and, yeah, because and it's... anything that would be considered non-traditional mm-hmm. sexual or sensual places, do we feel like... I shouldn't be getting off on like this. Like we're you know? Like, right, yeah. right. I yeah. shouldn't be getting off on this. I <laughs> yeah. really shouldn't be getting off on this. Like, I remember back in the day, boys used to think it was a big deal to, like, put their tongue in your ear. Do you mm-hmm. remember that? It was like, yeah. <laughs> it, it really is, like, for me... But I'm, even that, do it the right way. If you put it like around the rim of the ear, the rim, nice. Like but if you play stick it. it in the hole, yeah, like wet, wet, wet for wet days. Yes, wet. <laughs> yeah, you and just gave me a wet wheelie. You're, you're my brother that's now. Not, you're right, <laughs> that's right. disgusting. Right. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that's my point. But what if you realize you like it? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, what but then you, if you like it, then you're like, okay, am I a freak? Nothing wrong with that. But that's what I'm saying. I don't think that we've been sanctioned to actually like lean into our sensuality. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. think that we've been kind of shamed into our sens like well, it's a shame. It seems like boobs are for other people. And then the yeah. second they become for us, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. This yeah. isn't for someone else's enjoyment. Like I need to check myself. Right. Which is so backwards. It like is a, backwards. A, they're, you're carrying them around and giving the gift of sight, you know, <laughs> like the, your image to everyone all day. The gift day. of life and, the gift health, of life and, and health and stuff. Yeah. Like take they're some time for your own boobies and men have breast tissue too yeah, that's why men can get breast cancer yeah. there's just less cases because yeah. they have less tissue mm. um you have some recent exciting news about your boobies yes gosh remy i am newly breast cancer free Woo! yay oh. yeah Unreal. i'm completely completely Breast cancer free. So exciting. So that is... On John Fugelsang's podcast. Yeah. It was a really fun time. It was fun. Um, it's so crazy that we we talked about that in the studio. Mm-hmm. I think that was the first time I ever even 
brought it up yeah. live. I, yeah. No one. It was one of those things where I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want all of the emotion because I opted to go uh, integrative route as opposed to the traditional treatments for cancer. Mm-hmm. And so when I found out right away, I told my kids, I told my my their dad that I was wasn't going to go a traditional route. That mm-hmm. I would be willing if we, if this didn't work. Yeah. But that I wanted to do something integrative. And yeah. so I did it all natural, an all natural like months worth of treatment. And when I went back to the breast center to get scanned to see what would be the next steps with them for mm-hmm. traditional medicine, they said, you know, you still have masses, but there's no cancer. Well, we all I've had what they call uh, cystic breast my entire life. Mm-hmm. You know, and the thing that's so crazy about Very my breast hard is and that, lumpy. Yeah, ever since I was thirteen, cystic like ever since I started having my menses, mm-hmm. I always had little small lumps. I had mm. little ass titties and mm-hmm. little small lumps. <laughs> I'm like, give me the, you know, I mean, help me out. Like, really? Like, if I'm going to have some lumps, let me have some big ass titties. <laughs> but how you going to have some little titties with lots of lumps? It was like mashed got, potatoes. Like, it was terrible. Size like, lumps. lumpy ass. <laughs> and I said, this is ridiculous, guy. You play too much. And so it was like, I knew that I would always have to check and be pretty diligent about self exams and stuff like that. Yeah. But I had gotten, I was over it. And, um, Ironically, my mammogram came up, uh-huh. and it was like, "You got to be kidding me!" And and when was that? That was right in that was November twenty eighteen. Okay, well, that's so recent. That was so. Recent, it's like we right? when we had just met. Yeah, I didn't yeah, realize yeah. how recent it was yeah, for you November then. November twenty eighteen, and I went through three months of a little over three months of integrative medical integrative treatment. Yeah, and what does that mean? It just means that I went a holistic route that was like herbs, diet, uh-huh. um, things that people would call quack. I guess they would call it quackery. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I totally alkalined my body. Yeah. And, you know, whether whatever people believe about that, it's absolutely true that where there's acid, that's where growth happens. If mm. you have as- acidic stuff entering your body, it helps anything that's not good grow. Yeah, but when, if you alkaline your body, alkaline alkaline allows your body to fight off and ward off anything harboring or, mm-hmm. or um, in other words, metastasizing or growing. Um, yeah. you know. And so, I went that route, and I'd, I'd been a vegan twenty years, and I think that helped that because I hadn't had meat and all that stuff. I think I had a more of a clear passage, and that's just my own thinking. But yeah, when I went back and they said there was nothing there. I went straight black woman from church. Like, I was shouting in the, in the bathroom. <laughs> I was shouting, and uh, me and my best friend, my roommate from college, we walked out very dignified. She's a PhD, and, you know, I'm a former, you know, academic person. And yeah. we walked out very calmly, and then we got to the parking lot. I was like, hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, y'all laughing, I'm dead ass. Hallelujah! She said, won't he do it? I was like, yes, he will! And we ran around the parking lot, and then we got our asses in the car and went and picked up our children. Oh and carpool. God. So fun. <laughs> yes. It was, um, it was cool. What made you choose the integrative route versus... I've been seeing this practitioner for over 20 years for everything. Um, I had three natural home births, uh-huh. and he helped with that with our midwife. Okay. I went through... I suffered from juvenile migraines when I was in college mm-hmm. and undergrad and, and grad school. He helped me rid myself of migraines. Just He helped just change lifestyle. And for me... Lifestyle is everything. Like, yeah, I'm into. I get prevention. I get intervention. I'm not against any kind of medical intervention that's going to help you live a better life. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm not like, you know, it's not like you know, <laughs> floating in the air, you yeah. know. But at the same time, I do believe lifestyle is it. It just it's bigger than medicine. And so, with his help over the years, I've overcome so many things that people in my family, mm-hmm. you know, her, you know, through genetics, mm-hmm. have just. Combated. Well, that's the thing is, but we were reading in Charlotte's research that surprised me is that 85% of women who do get breast cancer don't have it in their genetic, ma- like they don't yeah. have it in their families or whatever. It's in mine. But I had always heard that you got it from like, if your grandma, if your grandmother on your mom's side had breast cancer, that you were getting breast cancer. Really? That's, I don't know, an old wives tale or something that I had heard. And our grandmother on our mom's side had breast cancer twice. Really? So I've been living my life being like, whatever, fuck all. I'm going to do whatever. <laughs> I want because I'm gonna get breast cancer like there's really? gonna be some point where I have to t- chop my tits off my um, best friend that was with me shouting in the parking lot and I can tell you guys this because you don't know her but her mom had breast cancer mm-hmm. um, when she was a kid her mom died when she ugh, was 10 ugh. years old and her dad raised her Yeah, and she'd already been told to be on the lookout just like you're saying mm-hmm. 
And after her second birth, her and her husband had their second child, she found out she had the brachia gene. Mm-hmm. You know, like Angelina yep. Jolie. Exactly. She went hard. Like, she did She did everything. She did what Angelina did. Yeah. She got them. Totally double, double mass and yeah. got, yeah. for lack of better language, scraped completely yep. out. She yeah. was like, I've had my two kids. I'm married. She breastfed as long as she could. And then she just, because her son was like, a newborn. He was a couple months old when they mm-hmm. discovered all of this. Oh, whoa. Yeah, so I was, this was her second son. So I was there with her when she opted, you know what, I'm going to nurse as long as I can, but the moment they get me ready for pre-op, they're gone. And That is like the most bold. crazy that, transition. But is that the boldest thing a mom to, to do? No, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, she did it. She says, my mom didn't have the research and the medical mm-hmm. advancement in place to let her live so I'm going to do everything. Although, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to get cancer. Totally. You know, the gene, but there's a high propensity. No, yeah. I used to think, I was like, oh, I, I didn't know about the BRCA gene when I was growing up. I don't, I don't know if it was. I don't even know if a, they had named it. If they had named back, it or anything. Back, like, you know. it just became this designer thing with Angelina Jolie that everyone's like, oh, now we know exactly what this is. Right. Um, but I, you know, the second, and our, our grandmother's still alive. She had breast cancer twice, oh, still wow. alive. Yeah. Um, but I was like, oh, I might as well just take them off at some point because... So you had it in your mind? I've had it in my mind the longest time, but... did you feel the same way? I know it's not my show, but did you um, feel like you were going to get your tits cut off? I don't think... You thought of it as seriously. about it like that. No. Yeah. Um, I was kind of just... It's something I have to be aware of and think about. Got sure to get a mammogram and self-test and... Let's talk more about this ayahuasca retreat. How recent was that? And was that like the first time that you were like, nipples, yes? (laughs) What made you go? Um, like, oh, a lot of things made me go. That was um, maybe a year and a half ago. I don't know. I had some issues I was trying to work through. Um, but yeah, it was like it had Im- unblocked something. Like I was no longer thinking in terms of like I, I can't give him too much or whatever. Mm-hmm. I was more not thinking of it as a transaction, but just thinking of it just pursuing what I wanted, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah. And it's been easier since. Yeah, um, I don't know why. I still have this reluctance to um, receive nipple pleasure. I yeah. am not quite sure. I Can think you- because there's this idea. I feel like if he did it, my partner did it equally, then I wouldn't feel so weird about it. But there's this idea that like women, like their whole bodies are sensual and like, I don't know. And it's that men should like explore women's bodies, whereas men, it's just the penis. And I don't like buying into that dynamic, I guess. I mean, maybe if you started working on his too, then it would seem like a more equal thing. All of our nipples come from the same embryonic tissue. That's why they're equally as sensitive. That's why, you know, breast tissue exists. Um, Right. That like you could both give and receive. Yeah, I have, but he doesn't really respond. Oh, then if it's not for him, it's not for him. Can you work on your own? Have you like have you become closer with your your own boobs? Not really. No. I think it's almost like tickling yourself. Like it's better mm. when someone else does it. Mm. Yeah, I I mean I was given the permission in the, my like masturbation workshop that I took last season. She was like, "Yeah, you can touch your butt, touch your boobs," and I was like. Oh, I didn't know that you could enjoy your own boobs <laughs> yeah. and be like, ah, this is the bounty that is me. I'm telling you, these little things are rock stars. Like the ones I have. Like, yeah. They don't, they're not much, but they're just spunky and ready to party. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and the more that I make peace with the things that I enjoy, mm-hmm. the more I'm able to like empower myself to say, you know, in my next incarnation, I'm going to say what I want, say what yeah. I like. And even like lightly counsel, like, cause I don't want to just be laying there again. Yeah. Ever, you know what I mean? Totally. Do you use them in your masturbation? Sometimes, mm-hmm. but I'm a total clit whore. Like a clit whore. <laughs> yeah. I'm a How clit long whore. have you been a clit whore? Um, do you remember, for a very long time. Do you remember your first orgasm? Yes. Really? I do. Amazing. I'm when? A, I, I feel bad to tell you. Please don't. Middle school. That's wonderful. Yeah. Middle school. How did it happen? What was the sofa's self name? Self-stem. <laughs> self-stem. Ah. Self-stem. Did you know what you were doing? No, and I'm glad I didn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have done it. I just was fooling around down there. Like, just, yeah. just flopping around. And then I, then I realized I didn't even know there was such a thing as a G-spot. 
Like, I didn't know that thing existed. Mm -hmm. And then that movie came out when I was, like, in middle school. Which one? G-Spot. I've never seen that. (laughs) It was such a kooky movie about the G-Spot. Okay. (laughs) And I wanted to find it. I was like, if we all have one, where's mine? Please press go. Yeah. (laughs) And I found that mother. I found it. So wait, it was in, an internal clitoral stimulation. Yeah, then. it's because the, cl- the G spot is just like the my, spot on your clit from the back. Right, wait, but you mine found is the clit first. at the top. Mine is at the top of my clit. Okay, like almost where the I, I should know it better because I've been familiar with it for years. I can tell you exactly where to go. I know how to get there. Yeah. Um, I know who lives next door. Like, I know all of the region, <laughs> mm-hmm. but, like, the medical terms, I should know. But, no, once I discovered it, I found ways to um, – it's not a penetra- – it's not something for me that's penetration. It's okay. It's all about um, topical okay. for me. Oh, so it was all external. Clip. Yes. Got it. It was totally external. Uh, yeah, and you just saw it in that movie because you'd never oh heard of a clip gosh. before, probably. No, not yeah. at all. Not at all. I've never heard of a G spot on the outside. And it's not necessarily on the outside. I think it's the way for me, the way to get to it okay. is more external. Oh yeah, that's like the, that's an orgasm. That's just your like yeah. that's your button. Like that's on your stomach? Button. It's, it's on my clit. It's just at the very top. Yeah, that's super normal though. yeah yeah and like it's upper like left it's gang busters like once it's there it's like no you just found your spot I it's found not the spot. g spot it's just yeah. a spot but but then the g spot's on the inside the, and i found that too nice okay <laughs> with help okay and so after and your first orgasm rocks, i didn't know how to process it yeah i was like at first i thought did i pee on myself <laughs> a little bit yeah like I, and then i wanted to be a squirter <laughs> but it never yeah. happened. Mm. I wanted to squirt. I saw like pictures of women squirting, and I was like, "This is cool." <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, posters in your room of squirt Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> but all of mine would just happen, and I would be extremely wet, like yeah. like Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, and, like you could slide families, small families. <laughs> <laughs> they would, small children could just go. We're coming back in, and it'd be like, "Come on!" So. I thought that was kind of weird that I would get that way. Yeah. Do you remember your first orgasm? Yeah, I was in middle school too. Nice. Um, Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like 11. My friends had described the bases to me and I secretly was really turned on by their description of fingering and thought like, why can't you do that to yourself? So yes. then I went into my bathroom and found out you can do that to yourself. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, then I would do it like every day. Yeah. I think I knew what it was, though. I'm not sure how I knew. I just, I think I had read in a book somewhere, like, you know, masturbation is okay. And I was like, okay, I guess I can That's do so it. That's so nice. My dad, told me, my dad told me it was okay. That's so nice. And it is more than okay. Like, I masturbate constantly. They know, all the listeners know this. Um, I use multiple toys. I'm constantly masturbating. Today, I was using my perfect match from Sweet Vibrations and the girl's best friend from Sweet Vibrations interchangeably. Um, I didn't want to edit some extras for Patreon. I, like, kind of procrastinated. And I was like, I just, like, I don't want to do it. And I was like, all right, I'll give myself a really nice message masturbation session and then I'll do it and so I did I went to town I had some internal external stim had some g-spot orgasms just was killing it squirted um and then I was like okay I'm not stressed anymore and I had like 50 because I'd like 15 orgasms and then I moved on with my day and now um I think those extras are up go check them out um Anyway, masturbation has changed my life. And if you're not doing it as much as you want to or as effectively, you got to get one of these toys from Sweet Vibrations. They're amazing. They have a forever warranty. I don't know who else has a forever warranty. Um, and they won't break the bank. They're awesome. And if you use our promo code HOWCOME at SweetVibes.toys, you get 15% off all toys. Isn't that amazing? So their, their toys are like around $40 um, and then less. And then even less than that with 15% off with promo code how come so go to sweet vibes dot toys um i believe that is only us it might be um, north america too check it out if you can't get the promo code you can still get sweet vibes toys on amazon but if you want that uh 15 off so many people have had their first orgasms with these toys and uh maybe you next we'll see but um that's awesome that your dad was the one who told you it was okay not my biological dad my, my dad that raised me uh-huh. uh, my mom's husband yeah he was a very sexually adventurous man. Mm-hmm. He kept pl- 
Playboy magazines and Hutzler, Hutzler, Hutzler mm-hmm. magazines and Penthouse mm-hmm. on the coffee table. Oh boy! In the living room. Wow. And he said he enjoyed the articles. Were you, was your family similar? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> you, were, you just found that one article and you were like, that's helpful. It's okay. Let's keep going. Yeah, I think it was like a book, an advice book for teen girls. Oh. And there was one chapter that was like, you know, I'm not telling you to go masturbate, but if you've discovered it, don't worry. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. Um, and were you open a, about talking with your friends about sexual exploration with yourself? No, I I think I first told them when I was maybe 15 during a truth or dare game, Mm -hmm. like the question was, what's your biggest secret? And mine was that I masturbated. (laughs) And then my friend was like, me too. Yeah, me too. Then I felt less bad about it. That's great. Um, Was it an easy transition turning into a writer about sex? Like, how did that happen? Um, I'm not sure how that happened. I guess I was writing... I was living in San Francisco and working for a tech startup Mm -hmm. and didn't really like it. So I started this blog on the side about um, dating as a feminist and like all the messed up stuff that happens when you like tell people on OkCupid you're a feminist. Um, That you believe in equal rights. (laughs) (laughs) And then, um, yeah, then I started just submitting articles elsewhere and Mm -hmm. eventually um, got assignments on sex and relationships. Cool. How did your family respond? Uh, we don't talk about it that much. Cool. I think I once they used to like read all my articles, and then at some point I told them I'd rather you don't read my articles. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I hope they have listened to me. Yeah. Um, like I think I don't know. My mom, she just moved like me to a different room in the house, and I found like these bags with my sex toys in them. And I'm like, shit, she must have found them. Are you with her still? You live no, oh, but oh, oh, okay. I don't know. For like when I visit, she just wanted to do something else with my old room. So <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, I think I don't think she's comfortable with it, but <laughs> but she's going to have to be because that's what you do. And you're helping people. Are you are there any um, articles that you've written that are your favorite? Yeah, well, the one that comes to mind, it was a, it was called What a Fake Female Orgasm Statistic Says About Gender Bias. It was about this statistic that I kept reading that women take 20 minutes to orgasm mm-hmm. and it um, didn't seem right to me and it was often used as like women are so complicated. So I kept looking for the source and then it was yeah. all just like people citing each other who like, okay. never had any study behind it and... Um, yeah, then like the only real statistic I found was from Kinsey and it found they took four minutes during masturbation and it just showed me how like powerful these myths yeah. are spread. Well, I mean, that's why I took such a long time, I think, because I would be like, oh, it takes so much work. We're so complicated. It's going to take such a long time. Do I really want to expend the energy? Mm-hmm. You know, like, do I really want to make somebody else do this? Whereas like now, like with certain toys, I can have one in 20 seconds. Like the girl's best friend from Sweet Vibrations, use our promo code HOWCOME for 15% off Sweet Vibes Toys. Wow. Like, that's not what they're telling you in those stats. Yeah, and probably partners also feel let off the hook because mm-hmm. they're like, well, that I'm, would be so much work. Yeah, <laughs> never which, which even if it is, they shouldn't use that in, as an excuse, but they do. Yeah. Hey, speaking of no excuses, have you gotten your Helix mattress yet? Mm -hmm. I know a bunch of you have because I've been getting rave reviews and uh, amazing messages about your wonderful sleeps. I've been having wonderful sleeps. Um, But if you haven't heard about Helix yet, maybe you're new to the podcast. Maybe you've been falling asleep during the times that I've been talking about this amazing mattress. Um, Worry no more. I'm going to teach you all about it. Helix Sleep. Their mattresses are amazing. They have a two-minute sleep quiz that matches you to your perfect mattress based on your body type and sleep preferences. The mattresses are customized to your unique needs. No more compromising on a mattress that wasn't designed to work for you. And if you're like, but what if my boyfriend and I like different stuff? That's great. They make mattresses for couples with different preferences. They split them down the middle uh, to meet each person's needs and sleep style. They have a 10-year warranty, and you can try your mattress for 100 nights risk-free. Never know that. And they'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but we know you will. Just go to helixsleep.com slash howcome, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. I'm telling you guys, I've never napped before in my life. And now that I have a Helix mattress, I don't think it's a coincidence. 
I can like I never was the type of person who could wake up and go back to sleep. I do that now. Um, so it, right now, Helix is offering up to $125 off of all mattress orders. That is right. Get up to $125 off at helixsleep.com slash howcome. That's helixsleep.com slash howcome for up to $125 off your mattress order. And if you're thinking of getting another mattress, guess what? Don't. Um, <laughs> this one also gives us a little percentage of your orders. So you're supporting this podcast by buying this mattress and you're going to be upset. Like we don't sell anything to you that we don't like because we don't like getting bad messages. It hurts my feelings. I only get nice messages about Helix mattresses. So go to helixsleep.com slash how come for up to $125 off of your mattress order right now. Oh, I forgot to mention in our sports convo earlier about Um, how people don't want to work out if they've got bigger boobs. Someone told me recently that Amazon women used to cut off one tit so that they could handle their bow and arrow better, which is an amazing, cool stat, but it is not a stat. It is just a myth. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, I think we finally just wanted to talk about breast implants. Um, And we're, we're all for breast implants. If you want them, you need them. They will change your life. Some, one of my friends, Sydney Washington, talks about how her breast implants have changed her life. She loves them so much. She used to think she was a little boy and now she's just living her best life. Wow. And she's a lesbian. So those boobs are for no man. Um, But just for anyone thinking about breast plants, breast implants, here are some uh, facts and risks and myths that we are busting. Um, They will not prevent your breasts from sagging. Not that sagging is wrong, but if you want to correct it, implants won't do that. You would need a breast lift. Um, breast implants aren't guaranteed to last a lifetime. Uh, you could have a rupture. A lot of them have to get them changed every 10 years. So if you think it's going to be like one time cost, nope, they're going to get turned and rotated just like a car. (laughs) Um, mammograms might be more complicated. If you have breast implants, routine mammograms will require additional specialized views. Um, breast implants might hamper breastfeeding. Not that we're all trying to feed children, but if you want to, that could be a thing. Um, insurance might, insurance might not cover breast implants because a lot of the times it's not medically necessary and it's just cosmetic. cosmetic. Um, and with certain breast implants, you have a low risk of developing a type of cancer. Um, and these are specifically stay away from ridged breast implants. For some reason, our FDA won't outlaw them. Um, other countries have, but if you... What are ridged? Like they have to be smooth, so it, not any bumps in them. For some reason, oh. they're selling ones with bumps. Still, never so. knew that. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know that. if it's they're bumpy. They're, they distinguish between textured, smooth, and textured ones. Yeah. They're only wow. about ten percent of the implants in the U.S., but they have shown to be like leading to cancer, um, which wow. has not been outlawed. So yeah. my best friend. This is gonna sound so um, gender friendly. My best friend had the most beautiful titties. You hear me? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, she in college when we went away and we had our two pizzas on and she was like, she was built like an hourglass. She had the titties people would buy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing that made it so funny was she had huge, a huge areola. Ah. Like she had huge areolas. Mm -hmm. So every pre-op when she would go in, she said the doctor would go, you're very very large areola. I'm what? not sure <laughs> we'll be able to replace because you know they can cosmetically like yeah. do the whole design thing. Yeah. And but they you lose like, all sensation in it no had, matter what, right? When she got them off and they put the expanders in to stretch her skin mm-hmm. to finally put at some point a, put in, you know, um the, the implant. Yeah, the implants. Um there was nothing. There was no nothing. And so this whole boobs thing mm-hmm is major business do you hear me like people are making millions of dollars we had um angel on who was talking about like his trans top surgery and stuff and he's saying that like nipples have become extra and stuff and like nipples it just seems are a major issue in any kind of breast surgery because you lose your sensitivity yeah she said she doesn't feel yeah a lot of them lose them completely um They'll get them tattooed. To they look. offered to tattoo a tat yeah. on her. She didn't get the tattoo. She did get the. She they put in like. Um, she said the nipples felt like little hard pellets. 
Yeah. Like she said, when they put the, you know, the false ones on. We were like joking about they how felt like, like in little Mean Girls, bullets. you know how the mom and Mean Girls, they're like, check out her tits. They're rock hard or whatever. And the dog <laughs> is like biting it. like, Arr. And it's and supposed like, to be like this funny joke. But like, that's painful as fuck for those women. <laughs> and dangerous. And you lose such a fundamental part of your body that I used know. to bring you like so much pleasure. Yeah. And then and no one talks about it. They'll, they'll say will make you look perfect or even better than oh, they did before right. or they'll feel they'll normal. They'll feel normal, but they mean it'll feel that way to, to another, another person. person. But not to you. Not yeah. to you. you get kind of knocked out of the equation. These are your titties yep. and you don't get the feel of yeah. your nipples. But she told me her husband, though, was he was so sweet about the whole thing because the last step was the tat. And mm-hmm. she had gone through so much, you know, yeah. with the double mass and the... He was like, you don't have to get it. Like, it was all cosmetic. It wasn't going to do anything. You don't have to get the tattoo? Yeah. To, yeah. You know, yeah. He, she didn't get the darkness, yeah. you know, like, yeah. to make it sure. look like. She said, I'm da- she said, that part I'm just not going to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a major thing. And so totally. now, with that being said, like, I like my little bumpy titties. Like, I'm so yeah grateful for yeah. these little bastards. Like, they made it through. Totally. You know I mean? And they breastfed three kids yeah. for a year each. And so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I just want to say, Susanna, I think it's so interesting that you were so in touch with your vagina <laughs> so much earlier than your boobs, <laughs> right? That's Cause true. like your boobs came in two years after you learned how to masturbate essentially. Right. Oh no. I get, mm-hmm. yeah. But it kind of makes sense if she was she already didn't want doing them, it though, yeah. too. She was like, they became a source of shame almost rather than like excitement i never learned they were for me yeah Yeah. i just learned that guys like looking at titties totally (laughs) what was in that for me yeah you're like i've already been doing this great thing with the below part so (laughs) why do i need these things they don't even see that part yeah they don't even see it right now unless you're winning the poo all run around around the school (laughs) like susanna's pooing it again (laughs) (laughs) i love it um well you guys this has been so much fun thanks you can find Michelle at Michelle Comedy on Instagram and Twitter. Go to her website for dates, michelle.net. That's all spelled Michelle, M-E-S-H-E-L-L-E. Um, she has a monthly show every last Friday in Newark, New Jersey, August 30th. And she's going to be in Philly at the Powerhouse Comedy Club, August 31st. You can find Susanna on Twitter at Susanna Weiss or on Instagram at Weiss Susanna. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, even our listeners have written in being like, I want to freelance and I want to do this stuff. And it's so daunting. So if you want to do that, like hit up Susanna and maybe she can help you out. Yeah. Um, I just have to ask this to everyone at the end of a sexual experience, which this has really been. Um, Michelle, did you finish? (laughs) Did I finish? I finished. Amazing. Yes. Susanna, did you finish? (laughs) Pretty sure. Okay. (laughs) Multiple times, I would say. Awesome. (laughs) Um, You guys, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much, Remy, for having me. You're the best. It was fun. I love you. I love your boobs. I'm sorry you had to watch me honk mine. Um, (laughs) This was great. Uh, we'll see you next time, guys, on How Come. Bye, Bye. Bye. It's not you, it's me. I try so hard to finish, honestly. They say you'll know when you go all the way from A right down to O. Oh, no. I think that I still got a ways to go. Oh, oh. I'm sick of this and I have got to know How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves I'm rolling up my sleeves Oh baby, I believe these guests can help Cause I can't do it by myself I wanna just